Assalamu alaikum. This is Jessica Tiksani in from the YouTube channel Civil Engineer. This is uh, my second video, and in this video, I'm going to share uh, some important and useful tips for the graduate civil engineers. Uh, and I should say that th this is basically a wish list from the employer. What the employer is looking from a graduate is is a is a first uh, as a first job. Um, I must say these tips are equally important both for uh, starting a new job as a civil engineer um, and also when you start when you leave your university uh, and you try to look for your first job so these tips uh, will be quite useful uh, to have in your pocket before I proceed into the details uh, of uh, this video uh, I will take the opportunity uh, to thank all my viewers um, who have uh, viewed and shared my first video um, and uh, thank you very much. I was overwhelmed uh, by the uh, viewership and by the comments uh, from my colleagues, from my family and from the wider civil engineering community. Uh, certainly this this is uh, this is your channel uh, if you you are participating in, in, in this uh, communication in this channel um, you will have more input from my end as well at the same time um, so uh, it's for for those who haven't uh, seen or watched uh, my first video I um, added the link into the description uh, so please uh, click on the link and watch the whole video which comprehensively explain the uh, introduction part of this YouTube channel. I'll briefly uh, go through the four important aspects of uh, this channel. So the, the first one is to guide and help the graduate engineer. The second uh, purpose is knowledge sharing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a part of the civil engineering community, how we can share and spread yeah, the knowledge of civil engineering. Uh, the third important aspect of this YouTube channel is the job hunting in particular for the uh, young and graduate engineers and, and number four uh, how to become a member of the professional institution for example institution of civil engineers um, so this video fulfills uh, the needs of the first and the third motives which is a guidance for the graduate engineers and the job recruitment process in, in the initial career stages let's get started with tips so the first tip i recommend is uh, know your basics uh, so by the basics uh, i mean for a civil engineer they should know uh, the structure analysis and soil mechanics um, they need to bring the university uh, the university knowledge with themselves for the for the first job recruitment stages and also basically when they start the first job um, they should know the basics of structure engineering which by, by which I mean um, bending moment shear forces actions reaction the action load path how the load transfers between the from the beam to the columns to from the columns to the foundation and ultimately to the soil uh, so that they should know all those basics and I'm sure as a student um, you, you, you have learned uh, all these at, at your uh, final stages of your studies so make sure you don't lose that knowledge and that is quite useful when you, when you start looking for your new job as a civil engineer and even when you start your first job so these are the basics you would certainly need uh, with your first job. Uh, in long term, obviously, these basics become a part of your your life. Um, uh, but yeah, in in, uh, in in the start, obviously, you need to remember uh, all all these basics, how to a a apply basically in different scenarios. Tip number two: software knowledge. Uh, the new civil engineers they are pretty good at the software. Uh, but from from experience, I'm, I'm just sharing that there are certain software you you need to be uh, at least have the basics uh, to the intermediate sort of uh, knowledge there uh, to start your career. Uh, the, the the first uh, the first software I, I, I highly
highly recommend is the AutoCAD or a macro station. So you need to know the basics of AutoCAD, uh, how to work out yeah, the basics of it, how to measure the, the, the lens, the sizes, the beams, and how to draw basic shapes. Uh, that should be good enough to start your, with your first job. Uh, the second software uh, I highly recommend and normally the, uh, the, the students and at the university basically don't stress on this one is the uh, MS Excel. This is really a powerful tool and throughout my career and throughout all the construction uh, and consultancy uh, they've been using this throughout for calculation purpose. Uh, this is a very useful tool in, in particular for the repetitive work which normally you, you will be dealing with in, in your first job. Um, so setting up the software, uh, setting up the spreadsheet uh, for repetitive work. Uh, you should, you should, uh, well I highly recommend you should have uh, from, from the basics to intermediate level of knowledge uh, in the MS, or MS uh, Excel. Uh, that would be quite useful uh, through your initial stages of your career. And the third uh, software um, for a civil engineer, obviously at the university level, you, 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 must, have, um, uh, you must have gone through either the FEM, finite element analysis software, like losses or answers. Uh, in addition, you may have learned about the um, linear analysis software, like um, um, super stress um, of Tecla etc uh, so all this knowledge you need to bring up with yourselves in, in your first job and and they are definitely a requirement from the employer when you start your first job uh, tip number three uh, communication this is a very important skill uh, you should bring up from your start to the end of your career uh, this is not a measurable skill obviously with, with the time you need to improve your communication but but the, the, the main um, communication I'm talking here is as a graduate engineer uh, you'll be dealing with it directly with your line manager your team leader uh, so you need to be you need to keep them informed with all your day-to-day -day sort of your business there how, how you're progressing with the with the day-to-day -day design uh, any issues uh, any constraints you're facing that communication should really be very transparent uh, and uh, it's, it's not just yeah the good points you need to communicate back but also the important thing is uh, you need to highlight from the onset here yeah, if there's any constraints, any problems uh, you are facing with, with progressing the design. Uh, so it would be quite useful to pass on that information as soon as you're aware of these issues uh, to your line manager so it can be dealt effectively within the time. Tip number four, uh, design life cycle. Uh, obviously, I mean, this tip is, is uh, I'm, I'm just talking from the uh, design perspective, if you're joining as a design, uh, as a design a civil engineer. So you should know the life cycle of a design. Um, so for, for the, 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 there are quite uh, different stages, so you should be aware not all of them are certainly at the start of your career but uh, the initial stages uh, like for instance the scope the program the coast um, these these are the fundamental three uh, when you start your first jobs you should be aware of these three uh, what what the scope is uh, what, what the deliverable is uh, what you're supposed to deliver is it a detailed design is the calculations only uh, who's the checker who's the reviewer so you you should have all these um, a scope in place so you should before you start the design so you should be uh, you should ask the questions uh, what, what the actual scope is and what are you delivering second aspect is the program uh, this is a really important aspect of a project life cycle and the client actually measures the performance based on the program. So if, if you're meeting the program, you, uh, your profile goes up. If you don't meet the deadlines of the program, so your profile goes down. So uh, that, that's a really important to know what your program dates are, what are the milestones, when are you delivering the design. 
uh, what are the main dates you need to meet, uh, when is the design is going to be delivered, when that's going to be checked by, when that's going to be approved by. So all these dates, yeah, you need to make a note of all these dates. A third aspect is, is the cost and this is a really important uh, for the employer and for the business. Obviously the employer is there uh, to make a business and make a profit. So obviously if you're not delivering your design to the cost uh, what's agreed, so obviously the employee is losing the money. Um, so that's that's really important aspect for the uh, for the employer. Uh, so you should you should not from the onset uh, at the at the scope stage. Uh, this is the scope and this is your budget. Basically, how many days, how many hours you're allowed to spend on that. Uh, if if you if you start the design and and you feel this is not sufficient. That's the best time to, to highlight that at the onset to your line manager, to the project manager. So it can be dealt effectively at the start of the project. Don't leave these sort of yeah, communication till the last and uh, to the last minute. Uh, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel good with, with the line manager, with the client. Right, so that's all for me in this video. I hope you, you have liked the information, the knowledge that's been shared in this video. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already to this channel, please do so and share with your youngsters and spread the knowledge. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.